Hi everybody, we're coming back for another module, writing decimals as fractions and fractions as decimals. What we're going to do is practice exactly that. I'm going to give you some decimals and we're going to rewrite them as fractions and then we're going to do the reverse. We're going to take some fractions and rewrite them as decimals. So let's get started. I have the fraction, I have the decimal zero, decimal point five, which you would read that as five tenths. So the five is in the tenths place, okay? So when I go to write my fraction, I would write the digit five, and since it's in the tenths place, my denominator is 10, okay? And from there, if you can reduce it, you would definitely want to do that. Five tenths will reduce to one half. So that's that one. And then you have another one. This one's a little bit bigger and it's a little different because it's got a number in front. So this is 80 and 8 thousandths because this is three digits behind the decimal. So we want to write 80 because it's a whole number, so we're just going to leave it the whole number. We're not messing with that. All I care about is the decimal part. So I have the digit 8, and it is in the thousandths place. Since it's in the thousandths place, we put it over a 1,000. And then if you can reduce it, you would reduce it. Well, lucky for us, 8 does divide evenly into a 1,000. 8 divides into itself one time. 8 divides into 1,125 times. So our final mixed number is going to be 80 and 1 125th. So anytime you have a number in front of your decimal point, you should, when you change it to a mixed number, get a mixed number. You should get the number and then the decimal part turns into the fraction. Okay, now we're going to do the reverse. I'm going to give you the fraction and we're going to turn around and make it into a decimal. So the easiest way to do that is to divide, just like in a previous module. You take the bottom number, which is your divisor, and you put it on the outside. You take the top number of the fraction, which is your dividend, put it on the inside, and then you start your dividing process. Remember, um, does 10 divide into 6? Absolutely not. So if it doesn't divide in there, stick a zero. Now what happens? Well, you stick your decimal point because six has an automatic decimal at the end of it because that was a whole number six. And then you just add a zero. And you would add zeros as many as you need to get where you want to be. So this time we're only going to add one at a time. So then I say, how many times does 10 divide into 60? six times, which makes 60 actually, so there's nothing left. So six tenths, the fraction, becomes zero decimal six, the decimal, okay? And that is still six tenths because the six is the first digit behind the decimal. All right, now we want to do this one. We have 9,213 and we want to divide that by 100. So when I do that, I put 100 on the outside, I put 9,213 on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and stick a decimal point and get me a zero going. And I'm going to divide. Does 100 divide into 9? Absolutely not. So you move over, remember? 100 also does not go into 92. However, 100 will go into 921 nine times, which makes 900. So then we divide, and that leaves me 21. Then you bring down the next number, right? And then you repeat the process. 100 divides into 213 two times, which makes 200. And I'm going behind the thing. So I'm going to move over. And then you bring that down, so that would be 100 on the outside, dividing into what I had left over. That was 9, 2, 1, 3. Let me move over here. I'm going to erase this because I'm out of room. All right. So we had the number 100. We divided into 9,213. 
and we were on a roll and we said 100 divides into 900, 21 nine times, which made 900. And that left me with 21. Then you bring down the next digit. And we said 100 divides into 213 two times, which leaves 200. And when I subtract, I get 13 left, okay? Now, I ran out of numbers, but because we're creating decimals, that's what the decimal point's for. Now I stick a decimal point and now I'm going to add my zeros because I need to do the rest of it. So now I can bring down another digit because I want to divide. 100 divides into 130 one time, which makes 100, and that leaves 30. Now, I would bring down one more zero because by doing this, I'm going to come out even. 100 dividing into 300, that's exactly three times. So, I have 92 decimal point, 1, 3. So, that would be read 92 and 13 hundredths. So, when you have this fraction, this improper fraction, know that when the top number is bigger, you have your improper fraction. When you change it into a decimal, you will have a whole number part and then a decimal part. If you have a proper fraction, you will only have the decimal, okay? And that's all we have for this lesson, and I'll see you next time.